Welcome to the final session on the muscular myopathies. We finish off the topic with a discussion of another group of acquired myopathies, the toxic myopathies. The toxic myopathies are a group of muscle diseases that stem from exposure to a foreign chemical substance. Examples include infectious agents, such as toxins secreted by pathogens, toxic chemicals, which can range from venoms to industrial chemicals, and recreational or prescribed medications. For many of these conditions, removing the causative agent, once identified, is sufficient to resolve the myopathy, although, as we will see, some of these agents may result in chronic damage to the muscle tissue. In this final session, we will briefly introduce the varied number of toxic myopathies and discuss in great detail myopathies associated with a common medication prescribed for cholesterol regulation. The accompanying table provides a list of some of the most commonly recognized chemicals known to cause myopathy in humans. Again, in no way are you expected to memorize even a portion of this list. The purpose of presenting this is to demonstrate the number of toxic agents that can interfere with skeletal muscle function, and the potentially daunting task of trying to reach a diagnosis. In the case of a suspected toxic myopathy, a thorough patient history is critical in reaching a proper diagnosis. Without question, the most prevalent form of toxic myopathy is related to statin prescriptions. This is a family of medications commonly prescribed for the regulation of blood cholesterol. The therapeutic mechanism of action is inhibition of hydroxymethylglutarol coenzyme A, abbreviated HMG-CoA, reductase, which catalyzes the rate-limiting step of cholesterol biosynthesis. The mechanism of action resulting in this undesirable side effect, referred to as statin-induced necrotizing myopathy, is not entirely understood, but some theories have been proposed. One is that the decrease in cholesterol biosynthesis results in less cholesterol deposition in cellular membranes. Cholesterol is a vital component of mammalian membranes, contributing to fluidity of the membrane. Decreased levels may leave the membrane more rigid and susceptible to damage. It would make sense that the muscle membrane is particularly susceptible to this decrease when considering the forces that project across the sarcolemma. Another theory is that inhibition of HMG-CoA reductase will have an effect on other metabolic pathways. For example, prenylation enzyme is involved in the post-translational modification of ubiquinone involved in the electron transport chain. Statin myopathies bear some resemblance to mitochondrial myopathies discussed earlier, giving some support to this theory. Prenylation enzyme is also involved in post-translational modification of GTPases, which could lead to cellular apoptosis. The symptoms for statin-induced necrotizing myopathy may range from mild cramping to full-blown rhabdomyolysis. Regardless of the severity, the common thread is a prescription for some form of statin medication, which is identified during the patient history. Blood tests will show elevated creatine kinase levels, and EMG studies will identify abnormal tracings. Muscle biopsies are generally not taken, as the medical findings combined with the patient history are sufficient to make a diagnosis, and a biopsy will add little to the overall picture. If biopsy samples are taken, the muscle may demonstrate necrotizing myopathy, as identified through the presence of ghost fibers. Typically speaking, the statin medications are pretty well tolerated by the general population. In general, mild pain and cramping is reported in about a fifth of all statin users. This number is expected to be much higher, as mild cramping is likely to go unreported in a large proportion of the population. The occurrence of rhabdomyolysis is fortunately uncommon in statin patients, occurring at a rate of about 1 in 20,000 people. Still, when you consider that there are presently about 30 million Americans taking a statin medication, the number of actual cases is quite significant. Research now suggests that there may be a genetic predisposition to developing the more severe side effects from statin medications. For example, the SLCO1B1 gene codes for a transmembrane protein involved in the hepatic uptake of statins. About 2% of the population is homozygous for a less efficient isoform that results in higher serum levels than anticipated for a specific dose of the medication. 
For this reason, it is recommended that serum levels of statin be carefully monitored in the early phases of the prescription and the dosage regulated on the basis of blood levels rather than on a person's body weight. The prevalence of statin-induced necrotizing myopathy is also dependent on the precise prescription. Some forms of the medication carry a higher risk of the complication than others, and an understanding of the relative risks for each commercial brand should be factored in when making a decision regarding the type of prescription to give. Consideration should also be given to other factors for developing statin-induced necrotizing myopathy, which include age, dosage, and the presence of certain comorbidities. There is also a risk associated with certain drug-drug interactions. Medications that compete with statin for cellular uptake or metabolism are likely to result in increased plasma statin levels above what is anticipated. For milder symptoms, no adjustments may be necessary. The cramping may be incidental or at the very least not so serious to justify altering the dosage. With moderate to severe symptoms, the recommendation is typically to discontinue the medication and monitor the patient. Symptoms typically fade within two months of the withdrawal of medication, although in some rare cases, patients can remain symptomatic for a year or longer. Once the symptoms fade and the patient appears back to normal, the physician should consider reintroducing the medication or switching to a different statin prescription. A more serious condition related to statin medications is statin-induced necrotizing autoimmune myopathy. The presentation pattern is similar to what was just described, but contains an autoimmune component that persists after the medication is removed. It is believed that statin interaction with HMG-CoA reductase changes the conformation of the protein enough to trigger the body to recognize the protein as foreign and to mount an immune response. Once the drug is discontinued, the native form of the protein is similar enough to the altered form that it continues to be recognized by the antibody and continues to be attacked in an autoimmune response. If a patient develops weakness shortly after being prescribed a statin medication that persists months after the medication is removed, an autoimmune myopathy should be considered, warranting further testing to be performed. A patient with statin-induced necrotizing autoimmune myopathy will present with persistent elevations in creatine kinase and continued abnormalities in EMG patterns months after discontinuing the medication. An MRI will also demonstrate regions of edema, scarring, and inflammation consistent with the patient's weakness pattern. Muscle biopsies are more commonly taken in this more persistent form of statin myopathy. There is a clear presence of necrotic muscle fibers with many other fibers demonstrating MHC markers. Inflammation is a less consistent finding in this patient group, and when present, it tends to be restricted to the paramecium surrounding arterioles feeding the tissue. Treatment for this patient group involves aggressive immunosuppressive therapy. In recent years, there has been a recommendation for a triple therapeutic approach involving high doses of oral prednisone, similar to what is prescribed in polymyositis and dermatomyositis, intravenous immunoglobin administration, and an additional immunosuppressive agent such as azathioprine or methotrexate. Clinical trials are still required to validate this recommendation. Ubiquinone and selenium supplementation have also been recommended as therapeutic treatment, but results are mixed. Aside from the statin medications, other medications are also known to potentially cause myopathy as a side effect. One that has gained notoriety in recent times is hydroxychloroquine, an antimalarial medication that has been proposed as a treatment for COVID-19 viruses. The medication is thought to disrupt the sarcolemmal membrane in a similar fashion to statin medication and highlights the importance of understanding all of the potential side effects related to a medication prior to its use in a new patient group, as the incidence of complications, such as myopathy, are expected to rise in proportion to the increase in individuals treated with the medication. That is going to do it for our session on the toxic myopathies, and we'll also wrap up our discussion of myopathies for the course. This is not, however, the end of our discussion of myopathies. An additional group of neuromuscular disorders, such as the myotonic dystrophies, 
bridge both the neurological and musculoskeletal systems and require a better understanding of neurology and the principles of EMG, both of which are covered in your neuromedicine course. Something to look forward to in the future, but for now, that's a wrap.